Welcome to This Week in Hospitality Marketing, the podcast show number 274, with your host, Lauren Gray. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Hospitality Marketing, the podcast. I am your host, Lauren Gray, and this is episode number 274. So each week we spend around 20 to 30 minutes sharing the most interesting tools, news, and techniques being used in marketing for the hospitality industry. We also do a quick recap of our weekly live video show, This Week in Hospitality Marketing, which also airs every Friday at 11.30 a.m. Eastern U.S. time. So with that, let's get started. And now, today's new resource tool. So our tools for review this week will have, of course, the theme related to our technique of the week. But let's dive right back into them. Uh, As you know, I tend to be on the fringe of some things tool-wise as to what can and can't be used. I I say that as a caveat to what I'm about to talk about. uh, And I'll quote my better uh, uh, co-host, Stuart Butler and Edward St. Ange, when I say, make sure that you have the fundamentals done, the block and tackle, proper SEO, proper content, proper CRM, proper paid paid, uh, programming, analytics for those events. Really, the fundamentals must be maintained and expanded upon and maximized before we start going on to the fringe of about what we're talked about. But this is talking to those that are doing that and those that are looking for different ways of doing something, a new twist, a new way of getting and approaching to something. And to that end, uh, I would like to point out there are some very interesting tools that are being used in a way of visualization and capability of explaining, as I mentioned and have been mentioning for many weeks now on the podcast. Ours is to answer questions of our guests. Uh, Gone right now are the days of rate and dates. Gone right now is showing a picture of our porte cachet or our front of our building or our building for that matter. Unless there's relevancy to answering a question. Exterior holidays, interior uh, hallways, balconies, no balconies, views, whatever. But just to show off our building only benefits the person that owns it or <laughs> it has a loan against it, I guess. <clears throat> the idea of us visually engaging our guests, uh, we know that a picture is worth a thousand words, old saying, correct? Well, videos are even worth 10,000 words. Uh, the, and the ability to go over and visually express and explain something in comparison to having to write uh, or describe it is by far more beneficial and helpful and less time consuming to the guest to find out by seeing what it is that they need to understand and engaging with them at those levels. To that end, I would like to refer to the tool myvirtualtours.com. Now, it runs through a lot of affiliate sites. Don't be scared by those. It's actually very affordable and easy to use. What this does is it takes one of my other tools, Google Street View, and amps up the game. We know that just talking about ourselves, our, our common space, our meeting space, our pool, our, our amenities, our fitness room, whatever it is. Okay, great. That's information that's needed. Uh, we talk about our protocols, what we do when we have a guest arrive, what we're asking them to do to maintain sanitation, cleanliness, and distancing and safety for all the things that we're having to deal with on travel right now for COVID. That's all fine and good too. But this also means as a marketer, that we have to expand our content and context of what we're talking about. We have to go beyond our four walls of our business and bring in all the things around us. Now, you, if you're a fervent listener of our podcast, know that I went through four steps to this, kind of like a Maslow's hierarchy, but only in four steps. The first is addressing the safety issues of guests, uh, quantifying what it is that will make them feel safe. The second is giving them information that they need to know what it is that's available to them in the context of what they need to know it as. What restaurants in the area, what are their hours of operation, do they deliver, do they pick up, do they have curbside, whatever it may be, limited menus, and what have you. The third is then to give reasons of what is around you that while they're there for you, for whatever reasons they're having to travel, they might be interested in knowing more about events, destinations, whatever that might have restrictions or guidelines as to how to enjoy them. And then the fourth is actually the expansion of the opportunity for people to find a reason to travel with you beyond beyond the necessity of it and find things that they can do should they be traveling and staying with you. That's a short abbreviated version of things we've discussed many times in our podcast before. Well, virtual tours, my virtual tours takes the ability to take a 360 picture and then put what's called hotspots in it. Um, you may have seen these uh, when you go to Google Street View and the little yellow guy and you drop them into a street and then all of a sudden you just, if you're standing 
where you drop the little guy in on the street to be able to look around in 360 as to what's around you and surrounds you. Now, other platforms may offer some things to this. My Virtual Tours allows you a very affordable way to put your own content into these 360 pictures. A little spot that you can put a little video on that describes what that business is or a little pop-up that shows the menu of that restaurant or the web link to that biz retail shop or what have you. Why is that important to you as a hotelier? Because you can begin to share in a very visual, interactive way information that would require reams of interesting content written <laughs> to describe the store around the corner, the restaurant around the corner, the restaurants around the corner, what they're offering, what their hours are offering, all that context of what you should know while you're staying with you, but in a very virtual, visual way where people can interactively engage with it however you designate for them to go over and be able to understand where you are located versus what is around you. It doesn't have to be just what's around your hotel either. You might find that you're nearby something and that visually helps people understand the relationship of your location to that location, but also puts them into a location that they can explore with based on what you can share. What does that do for you as a marketer? One, it makes you be have the ability to reach out to those businesses and say, hey, look, I'm going to go and bring this in front of my audiences. What do you want me to share about you? that I put into this, is it your menu, is it your hours of operation, is it your website, to what you have, is it your retail link of what you, people can go to to buy from you on. Which brings us to one of our other tools, which is called spot.ai, S-P-O-T-T-A dot A-I. And that is where you can put hotspots in, in those same images, but in this case, both not just images, but also videography, which allows you to go over and allow people to buy stuff by clicking on what they find of interest. The best example is probably more from a retail component of uh, runway models walking down the runway and these little dots, uh, hotspot icons are on their clothing. You can click the clothing and it pops up. This is the uh, Yves Saint Laurent uh, uh, jacket for, you know, if you want to be interested in buying it, here it is. There's a picture and here's a link to go buy it. So from a retail component, it, you can see the value proposition. Well, we're also doing that from an opportunity to expand on places and things that people might want to be interested in. Uh, being able to buy something in a retail store or to discover something in a retail store, similar to what myvirtualtours.com offers, but in a more interactive purchase funnel sort of way. Which also brings us to another platform uh, tool that I love to use, which is called Gig Gro uh, Gigrove. Um, and that's for the gig environment. Same methodology. You're able to literally create an interface that allows people to purchase via you. Now, this isn't into putting hotspots on images so much, but it can be driven to this platform, Gigrove, uh, which is G-I-G-R-O-V-E dot com, in which people can then see what you have to offer. If you feel hindered by the platforms that are providing service to you and you want to find a means to put your own food menu on where people can order via through you through a, a payment gateway and actually have it no notify somebody internally on your team it gets fulfilled it can get delivered or we waiting for pickup or what have you gig Grove is a very affordable platform people can use to create this online e-commerce market super cheap now i bring up gig Grove for another reason which we're going to get to in our technique but the last tool I like to refer to is literally the mothership of it all, which is Google Street View. Google Street View is not just for what Google drove around as a car with a funny little globe on top with cameras. You can create your own 360s and tours, not just with virtual, myvirtualtours.com, which allows you to go from one room to the next, and you can give a virtual tour of your hotel with My Virtual Tours, which we'll be talking about in a little bit. But also with Google Street View, you can do the same thing, but you can do it with your phone and the application is free. Literally look for Google My, uh, Google Street View app. It's Android and uh, iPhone, uh, iOS, and you load it, it's for free. And you look a little geekish when you take the pictures. You stand in one location and you say, I'm gonna take a picture and you hold it up and you see a little circle in the middle of your picture screen and you hold the circle around the circle and it then takes the picture and then you move over to the left and up and down and you literally spin around like a ballerina, taking all these pictures around in circles, above your head, down to your feet, and what have you. But what the software does is it puts all those pictures together in what's called stitching. Stitches them all, matches up where the, the edges of the images should line up to each other. And it now creates a 360 picture of what you just took. So you could do it in your lobby, you could do it in your meeting room, you could do it by your pool, whatever it is. You can take those, and the really cool part about my uh, Google Street View is it then can get loaded onto Google Streets. 
So now when somebody wants to look at, say, your bo- or your meeting room or your ballroom or your pool area or your fitness room or your uh, lobby or one of your rooms, your feature rooms, your suites, whatever, there's actually little pins on Google Maps that people can click, just like bringing the little yellow guy onto the street, and now they can t- stand where you stood to take that picture. To give you some example of the power of this, I've been doing this for a long time with Google Streets when it first came out in beta, and I've traveled all, all over the place. One of the ones that has been the most popular was when I was down in Sydney, Australia, I was standing beside the Opera House, the famous Opera House. And at the time, Google had yet, they hadn't expanded past driving around in cars for their street views. And I was one of the first to put a street view in an area that a car couldn't go to by the Opera House. Well, I've had almost three quarters of a million people view my picture of where I stood that day when I did that 360 picture by the Opera House, Um, which is amazing to think that that many people looked and saw what I had taken a picture of from that location. Even now, whenever I do these pictures and put them on Google Maps, which it does automatically with the app, uh, it can be anywhere. It can be uh, in the beach in front of your resort. If you have a beachfront resort, it could be in the parking lot of your hotel to show what your hotel looks like from that perspective where they haven't taken a Google picture of it yet because it's on private property and Google didn't drive down that road to be at your hotel. It has so many applications that you can add to the map, plus use those links and put it into your marketing share with people. It's like, look, this to get you in prep to coming to us, this is what we look like from the front view. You can go there and see what we look like so that when they're driving, they can actually, oh, that's it right there. I, I saw it in the picture, what have you. So our four tools that I'm referring to, to this week, which again goes past the block and tackle of what you always should do, is myvirtualtours.com, Google Street View, which is google.com forward slash street view, spot.ai, which is S-P-O-T-T dot A-I, and Gigrove, G-I-G-R-O-V-E dot com. Remember, all those links will be in our show notes as well for you to go and take a look at them as well. And that brings us to our technique of the week. Now, for this week's hospitality technique. So our technique this week is, and I like to always try to keep them cute and engaging, ho, 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 tis the season now to sell everything. <laughs> I brought up the virtual tours and the 360 imagery and things, and it borders on retail-esque sales and destination marketing and a little less on the I have a hotel and I'm trying to fill rooms but with the incredible uniqueness and acceleration of our marketing strategies that have had to happen over these past seven now eight months of COVID um, we don't have the traditional Black Friday coming up we don't have people going to be parking out and tenting and you know camping out in front of Best Buys and Targets and Sears and JC Penney's and because most of those stores are already gone, Sears and J.C. Penney, you know, Sears is gone, J.C. Penney's is on its last leg, uh, or actually just went under refinancing. But neither here nor there, they're not what they once were. Um, and so, because of that, all these retail outlets, Walmart, Target, Amazon, even Amazon in October had their 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 Amazon days, their Prime days. Um, but Walmart and, and Target are continuing on with their offering their early best deals now. For a couple of reasons. One, we've already been warned because of the 56% increase in online purchases, there's one, either going to be a lack of inventory or two, a huge backlog, self admittedly by all these platforms already, FedEx, UPS, uh, DHL, all the rest of them, uh, even Amazon saying we're going to be 42 million pieces of delivery behind our normal scheduling capability come the day after Thanksgiving. So all of this stuff of delays in delivery, potential not be, uh, uh, inventory available to sell, has diluted this apex of, of transition of retail. I mean, I used to love getting the Thanksgiving newspaper, the Thursday newspaper, because it was six inches thick because of all the flyers for you know for Black Friday. That slowly got diluted traditionally over these past few years where people were doing early releases, sneak releases, and what have you. Now it's full-blown gone where people are just flat out, Everything's being on Black Friday sailed now, Cyber Monday. Those are just terms to a bygone area of apexing. But it does have relevance to people's perception of mentally shifting into the holiday spirit, the holiday purchasing, gift giving, gift buying. You need to be in that conversation. What do we have to sell? Well, we have rooms. We have restaurants. The first thing that comes to mind is, well, they need to know more about them. 
That goes to the virtual tour component I was talking about, visually showing them things that they may not have known. This also goes to the fact of you, as a good community engagement business, reaching out to other businesses in your area going, look, I have this audience of people that's come and stay at the hotel, and I want to provide value to them when they stay at our hotel about you, about your restaurant, about your retail. Now, a lot of these big boxes already have it broken down. You can go to their website and you can pre-order, currently order, get deliveries, get curbside pickup, whatever it is. One thing that they are em emphasizing this season is to, if you can, purchase from a big box or a store and simply pick it up because the inventory is already there so that you don't have to wait for these potential delivery delays. And that's an actual market strategy we've talked about on the live show and in the previous podcast about adding that to your repertoire of targeting. If you're near, <laughs> targeting, almost a pun, if you're near these big boxes and, and businesses that are doing that and you market to the outskirt markets that may not have these retail outlets as readily available to them and incentivize saying, come and stay with us, order all the stuff that you plan on picking up with these places and stay with us and rather than try to rush back home that night, Make it a simple arrival, enjoy, relax, spend the day picking up all this stuff, gather it all together, spend the night, relax, eat someplace local, and then make your way back. Make it a holiday, into, you know, a new holiday tradition, as it were, so to speak. So that's one way of looking at it. The other is, there's a lot of, you know, American Express does this on Saturdays, Small Business Saturdays. There's a lot of businesses that are potentially in your market that don't have the audience building that you have, do not have the audiences that you have, the sheer numbers of people that you can potentially reach out to. And those people could equally be benefited by you participating with them, sharing with them, a, say, an internal picture of their small retail outlet and showing what's on the shelves and letting them pick what they want to highlight off of it and you sharing that information with your audience and saying, look, there's an amazing custom jeweler around the corner. And they have one-of-a-kind stuff. And here is some pictures of inside their store of the one-of-a-kind stuff. And maybe there's a hot spot for them to buy that one-of-a-kind necklace or that one-of-a-kind candle or that one-of-a-kind uh, macrame or whatever it is. You can help to the local businesses by contributing your audience to their discovery. It also means to your restaurants locally being able to share that as well. What are they offering for food? What are the conditions of, of their meal periods? Is there municipal restrictions as to how many people they can have internally or not? With the weather definitely changing, that changes the scope of what restaurants can do. And delivery becomes more important and sometimes maybe more struggling because of the weather, as also does pick up, as does also the ability to eat inside. But sharing that information both visually and within the message of what you're providing for those who are staying at your hotel, especially should you be a limited service hotel or have limited services in your hotel, then it gives you the chance to be larger than what you are by sharing those things from around you. So being able to sell all those things, describe all those things, show all those things are what those tools, my virtual tours, Google Street View, Spot, and Gig Grove are all about. And that is ho ho ho, tis the season now to sell everything. Now, this week's hospitality news that you should know. So news and show review. We had a special guest host, Javed Bukra. Uh, Javed, um, he is the COO of North America for Infinito Solutions. He has a revenue management AI platform, for, for lack of a better qualifying description of this. Um, it's meant to create predictive modeling as to what you should be looking at in your revenue data to know what you have attained historically and how it impacts your future tense. We had a very lively discussion of the impact of this. We had Ben Henley uh, from 3 and 6 Media uh, Marketing out of, uh, out of England. Uh, we had Adele Gutman from uh, uh, Aspire Reputation Marketing. We had Dean Schmidt with Meta Search Marketing and uh, Basecamp Meta. We had Lily Mockerman with TCRM Services and Thinks Up Enterprises. We had Robert Cole, which was a pleasure to have from, uh, from having him delayed for a little while for a few months working with J.D. Powers. Robert Cole with Rock Cheetah was with us. Tristan Hayward also from 3 and 6 over from uh, The Pond. And Stephanie Smith from Cogwheel Marketing. Uh, very interesting discussion. Uh, we also had Tim Peter. Uh, Tim Peter. No, just, oh, we did not have Tim this week. I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. He made some comments that we used, though. Um, this was an active discussion as to what would be the quantifiable content that goes into What's necessary for this to be accurate? We talked about the volatility of the current markets. We talked about all of a sudden lockdowns and how does that change the fact that your software is telling you you should be expecting this type of demand when in fact there is none because it's been shut down. Ben and uh, 
Trist brought those com uh, comments up because in, in uh, England they have done mandatory shutdowns. So even if you wanted to do business, you can't do business because nobody's allowed to travel to your market. There's restrictions to how long they're out in public, where they can do while they're out in public, and all those things that basically shut down your business. So we had a lot of fun conversations around that. Uh, Javed was uh, very good and very gracious as to talking about how and what it does. And yes, the, the, the fact that there needs to be more abilities to, to influence uh, what inputs to it and historically how it reports so that it's really meant to abbreviate the time from a manager's perspective or owner's perspective that rather than having to rely on somebody else to interpret or share what they think is relevant data, they get to look at a platform that gives them the perspective and insight of what historically and future tense is happening so that they know whether or not they're in the right direction, right path, or whether or not something has to get changed. That's the core element of success with this platform, which is uh, Infineo.Solutions. Um, we went off on lots of different fun tangents, as always. Uh, we talked about integration capabilities. We talked about additional inputs from marketing data sources, so there'd be a preemptive prelude to perhaps downturns and cycle changes and what channels and channel contribution percentages and what have you might create variations that the, that the software reporting could reply for, which was a lot of fun. Um, so that and we, good gosh, we talked with Robert about third quarter return reports. We talked about, uh, the, he, he, Robert gave us a chart of amazing comparisons as to revenue losses of so many businesses, all the brands obviously, and some, and some of the OTAs as well, and how they looked and why they looked the way they did. Again, too many numbers and, and things to go review because we spent two hours on the live show, so obviously we can't spend too much time on the recap for this. Uh, but note to say that there's, it was a fascinating dialogue as to impacts as to current tense business and future tense potential or lack thereof. Uh, so we had lots of conversations about it. Um, we did hit a little bit on some of the rulings that came through the most recent election, uh, most predominantly about things like California's ruling about Uber not needing to treat its drivers as employees, aka offering benefits and insurances, what have you. How is that going to affect a lot of business in is a precedent for others to go over and say, "I'm not going to hire you. I'm going to, I'm going to just put you under contract. I'm going to, you know, I'm not. Gonna, you're going to have to rely upon yourself to take care of all the stuff that, you know, insurance and what have you. I'm just going to give you flat rate stuff, and also know it's very volatile that you can just let them go or cut them back or shut them down or whatever. And there's no repercussions as to um, minimum hours uh, needed to give them or what have you. It creates a very hard precedent to work from under for how it could negatively impact, uh, impact a lot of employees' relationships with their current company, especially as some are being brought back into the workforce, how they're being brought back and wonder what conditions. This creates a dangerous precedent uh, for some of them. Um, we also talked about the lack of communication clarity of uh, associations within hospitality. Uh, they've all kind of resegmented themselves as to who's focusing on what. A lot of them have put content behind their firewalls and there was some defense to it as to they need to do that because they need to survive. They need to charge for what they've been producing for free as in support of the industry. Now they need to begin to monetize that back again so they themselves can sustain uh, a life. And then there was pushback on the other side saying that we are not out of this yet and that if they truly want to be the value proposition of, of an association with the industry, they need to provide more substantive support that isn't a cost factor since so many people are still devastated by this and unable to pay for that contribution percentage. So pros and cons for both sides of it, but a very active discussion and very enjoyable to have with all those that participated. So thank you everyone for joining us that were our co-hosts on the show uh, on those discussions. The news article that I want to bring is one that did not get discussed on the live show that I think has a very profound impact because I know personally firsthand of, of last of this week, um, I just looked at the dashboard on Google and go, what the heck is this? And that is the new G4. Uh, this uh, article actually came from eConsultancy.com and the headline was, how will the new Google Analytics change how marketers approach measurement? Uh, as we know that this is um, something that's happening with Google Analytics 4, GA4, just recently rolled out from beta, which was AppWeb. Uh, this was done uh, because of the move and migration of third-party cookie tracking. We know that that has been a shutdown over periods of time. Uh, at first, it only hurt those that were abusing it and, and, and not keeping responsible uh, control of it. We know that eventually, because of the, all the browser offerings, you know, Google, Apple, 
uh, Firefox, all the rest of them, that they will eventually shut down completely third-party tracking. And also, I think in the other ways with Google, it was a matter of um, answering to some of the other platforms like Adobe, Omniture, and so forth, how, uh, uh, how to measure and track actual traffic to this. Um, obviously, Google 360 has more advanced feature abilities to it. They're introducing some of that into the free Google Analytics. This is the first rendition of it. It's still in beta, meaning that it's in the transition process, so you're able to compare side to side, but it is taking away some things and putting other some things in this. Um, it is going to be changing a lot of the base information that we have been using. Uh, one of the first things that you're going to notice with it out of is bounce rates and visits. They're now called events, uh, which should be interesting to see. They, they're already pushed back saying this is no better, it's just different in the same way as to what this means for some people. But there's a, the biggest thing about this is the dashboard has changed, the functionality has changed, the methodology of comparison of data, is, and the reliance upon AI interpretation. Because you just can't look at the raw data as directly as you used to and try to interpret some things because of it, you have to rely on the AI to tell you what the implied traffic value of it is. And we have yet to see all the benefits of what it's trying to offer in place of what it's taking away. I put this very much about what it was like when they took away keywords, uh, where all of a sudden you're saying, well, wait a minute, now I don't know what people were using to find me. How am I supposed to know what I'm supposed to be optimizing my content for? Well, Google did that on purpose because they gave us attribution strings and attribution modeling. And what does that mean to us? So because of that, we're changing and transitioning again. And the reason why this is such an important article or important thing to be concerned with is it's happening now. This is changing now. The questions you used to ask prior to this can't get answered anymore in the same context. Like, what's my bounce rate? How many visits did I get? Not there anymore. It's going to be about events and tracking through it and what AI is saying where and from they came from and where and to they were going. So there is a lot of changes to it. A lot of it is still yet unknown. Google's not forthcoming with a lot of their, this is why, and this is what it's doing now, and this is what you need to know. A lot of it's like, it's been changed, and it's up to us to figure out what that change is before they even come back and tell us what it is that they changed for what reason. So with that in mind, that was our news article, Google Analytics Change for How Marketers Approach Management. So remember, you can find us on Google Play, Apple iTunes, iHeartRadio, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Spotify, Pandora, Tuned In Podcast, Breaker, Acast. The list goes on. 39 platforms and counting. We're even now on Deezer. <laughs> uh, we're also on Amazon Alexa, Google Assistant, and Siri just asked to play the Hospitality Marketing Podcast. And no matter which one you may use, if you like the show, please rate us and leave a comment. That will help others find our content. Also, if this is your first time hearing us, you can, of course, subscribe to our show on any of those 39 platforms as well. For an archive of all previous podcasts, you, of course, can go to hospitalitydigitalmarketing.com forward slash podcast. That's with an S. And don't forget our live video talk show that you can join and participate in every Friday at 1130 Eastern U.S. time called This Week in Hospitality Marketing, the live show. Or you can simply go to hospitalitydigitalmarketing.com forward slash live and look for show number 274 that's our latest one that we have with Javid. so again thank you for the privilege of your time and we look forward to talking to you next week you have been listening to this week in hospitality marketing the podcast show 274 brought to you by hospitality digital marketing in support of the hsmai the hospitality sales and marketing association international all rights reserved copyright 2020